Hey everyone, I'm Alfred. Welcome to Bastion. Um, I almost don't know how to introduce this game. You know, I do. Um, ten years ago. Ten years ago today. Uh, little baby Alfred was on Xbox Live Arcade. And they announced this thing that they were doing. Uh, where they were going to have cool indie games come out of all summer. And there were a lot of good ones in there. I think Trine was in there. I know From Dust was in there. Um, some of them weren't good. I just remember them all. And included in there was Bastion. Uh, a game that I had never seen anything like it before. I'll see you in the next one. And... Proper story is supposed to start at the beginning. Ain't so simple with this one. You may see why. Now here's a kid whose whole world got all twisted, leaving him stranded on a rock in the sky. He gets up, sets off for the bastion, where everyone agreed to go in case of trouble. Like, come on. Look at how fucking beautiful this looks. Like... This game's ground forms up under his feet as it points so away. Good. He don't stop to wonder why. And the fact finds that his lifelong friend just lying in the road. It. Well, it's a touching reunion. So yeah. <clears throat> you see anything familiar? He sees what's left of the rippling walls. Years of work Hades. undone in an instant. In the calamity. That a survivor? No, ma'am. It's a gas fella. Forced out from underground. Kid pops him good. An old repeater falls out of the sky. Ain't a gift from the gods, but it'll have to do. So yeah, back in my day, this is what... Gotta hold her still to spin up the chamber. This is what Supergiant games were much more well known. Kids worked up quite a thirst by now, so that fountain looks real inviting. Sometimes you just need a drink. It's also a very hard game to talk over because of how a awesome school of squirts is. tunnels up around them. Must have fled here from the mines. Also, the fact that this game has a narrator. How great is that? Kid finds a memento from a girl he knew. Always use the fans here. It's a wonder the old saloon still stand. Like, I just want to let Rux talk. I mean, the stranger talk. I don't know his name. I mean, as you can he see, we're in He sets foot inside plus. one of Selandia's famous watering holes. Wait, haven't I? Anyway, Rondi's place just brings back memories. Sure does. So, this game has a... I don't know, it's almost Dark Souls-like. Then finds his trusty shield. New game plus system. But just as he's getting a handle on it, we're resetting the security her, her, takes her, her, him for any thief. Honestly. Where resetting the world and new game plus is a part of the story. Clang. Shield saves his eye. Which is one reason why I wanted to play New Game Plus, having gotten the ending. Windbag started game turning plus. up for last call. Rondi always wanted his ashes scattered here. So yeah, um... I was naturally, like, immediately More drawn More start coming out of the woodwork. Because... This is a completely... This is so... This is so new to me. It was very inspiring. A big old fella pops out in front of the kid. Some may even see relevant uh, examples of similarity in my own game, for those who know. Post-apocalyptic shenanigans crossed with, like, fantasy stuff. Because whenever anyone does post-apocalyptic, what they really mean is either Mad Max or Rock. Kid sees the weight of the bastion out the window. It's a bit of a drop. And it's very exciting to do something else. And Bastion is post-apocalyptic. He gets so, a good look so at things on his way down. Like, 
He lands on top of a breaker's bowl. I feel like it's implied that the apocalypse broke. happens like the day, the morning before you wake up, and you just happen to sleep in. In an almost Leon Kennedy for some target practice. One long before the kid could loose an arrow, strong and true, he knows he should draw the string all the way back. Was good. The kid Never pockets this a game memento with a, from a breaker. Once with the a fastest PS4 man in the land. an Xbox 360 controller, an Xbox One, and a PC. Can you play this on any sort of PlayStation? Good news is the emergency defenses still work. Bad news is they aim it for the kid. So naturally we got a Royal Guard system going. I've said this before, and of course I created it from that muscle right. Um, any game that has picks up a few pointers from a dusty old tone. a system of perfect dodging, for perfect He's a mighty rather, fast learner. Will always have a cool place as a, as a video game because cool stuff will always be able to happen. He finds the distillery right next to the arsenal. Tough part of town. Can we talk about that one for a sip of the spirits in that distillery, and the kid will feel like a new man. So, because we are, um, because we're new game plus, we have all of these unlocked. where the kid can pick the best tools for the job. So I actually already have all the weapons, because of course I do. However, I will stick with what I am given mission by mission. Uh, if that's alright with everyone. I love Squirt Lure, even though it's not that great. Some yeah. of them squirts birthing like crazy in a couple of corn bins. See, so yeah, this is the game. Like, it just it looks like this, and nothing else does. And you can see that it obviously shares a lot with Hades. It's a thing really that's common across all Supergiant games, I think. Um, I've not played Pyre or Transistor, actually. Here. An old ferry barge sends the kid um, on his way. But I know that in Transistor the Bastion's is also real a close now. strong source of narration and narrative focus. And what's more, uh, bitch and music. Which I'm led to believe is the case for every super drive game, no matter what. Kid takes a chunk of alloy. The smell of barley and spoiled blueberries fills the air. Scumbags. Kid maybe shouldn't have done what he just did. Robs a scumbag of his last meal. cool and beautiful this game is. Honestly. This this is really really Kid puts to me because like misery. the 2010s were a very very good era. Because part of this any games meant like a bit, you know. You never really got a guarantee on indie game or what that meant. Like occasionally there would be stuff like Fez, but usually you would have a very specific style and look for an indie game. And and then. He falls to his death. <laughs> I'm just fooling. <laughs> um, usually, indie game meant it's like Mario. Brothers, he finds the core know? to the wharf district. 
He steals the city's heart. Might as well. Kid has a feeling he better get a move on. The place is starting to fall. Kid just keeps running. Clear naturally. Some assault like crazy. You get specific dialogue mentions of At what you're doing. At last, the skyway is in sight. Whisks him where it needs do. to go. And boy, is that just the best. Like, holy shit, it's so cool. Now the kid sees something stranger still. His mind races. You don't get up unless you want to. Did anybody else survive? Sure enough, he finds another. He finds me. Yeah, that's the stranger. We talk for a spell. He's just been narrating me. There's a bit of the Bastion's power in that crest. Enough to point the way to the cores. So, because of the thing on my back, which is essentially a police badge, I have a compass to the plot coupons. All I tell him is to set that core of his on the monument there. Then watch. And the plot coupons go in the monument. And the monument's on the Bastion, and that's the name of the game. I try to let the kid down gently. This is the Bastion, all right. Except no one else showed up. <laughs> Just like that, the bastion comes alive. Starts growing again, growing stronger. Kid's gotta put its power to good use. Now the bastion can send him even farther into the wild unknown. Kid ponders what to build. So the gameplay loop is already very evident. Get a core, get to the bastion, build a thing, use the power you get, and go further to the next thing and get another core. Behold, the Pantheon. So, this is how you activate all the hard mode stuff. Hensa. You get more XP. Javel. But also, uh, more stuff happens. Rothus. Udrig. God's never liked competing for people's affections. Kid don't know what's out there waiting for him. So, these are areas we've been to already. Back to the Bastion. And then this is um, challenge mode stuff, essentially. You get cool bonuses for it, but it's not super, super important. Now he lands at the intersection between bad and wrong. Badong. <coughs> Ought to be a core down one of these twisted streets. But which one? He heads for the squirt steps. Won't be no field trip this time. I love how much time there is. Like, won't be no field trip just directly implies that it normally would be. And boy, is that just the greatest. They say even the most rambunctious squirts can be tamed. No sign of the core here. At least the kid got something for his trouble. See, it's a very obvious and simple gameplay loop, and you know what? That's perfectly fine. Scumbag and digest just about anything. Except for this. It's quick for slicing and light enough to throw. As somebody who actually owns a machete, I am pleased with this conclusion here. I use it for camping. So you can see that because of the things I've Up turned north on, is where the gas fell they drop little grenades on that. Tend into his flock. No white gas fellas all dress alike. The kids wondering the same thing. What a good narrative. So, uh, for those curious, we will see Darren Corb, voice of Zagreus. Uh, Darren Corb is in this game. And there it is. But it's locked down tight in an alloy cage. There we have it. A blustery old foreman's keeping his fellas in check. Almost like he's showboating for the crowd. And now there's a new marshal in town. 
the nature of enemies in this game is so fascinating. The way that this game treats its enemies. He has the whole place grown, but it's too tough to fall. Because truly, every enemy in this Might game is well just the other like side you. streets before leaving this hole. Whoops. So we can he leave. He for the biggest out. dump in town. Scumbag alley. <laughs> You love to see it. And there he is. The oldest scumbag of them all. Gershel. Shame old Gershel can't float like when he was a young fella. So yeah, Squirt should evolve into Gash, well, and evolve into scumbags. They're all part of an evolutionary line, sort of. Because they're just goo. Floating goo, but goo all the same. He heads for the east side, where windbags used to keep the local forge. Somehow that old forge is still standing. Kid's ready to go, and his ticket out is right where he started. Inside the forge. He can fine tune those instruments. So we can just upgrade weapons here naturally. Takes a careful touch to rattle those bones like that. Something that I just really love is that this thing is made of bones. Like, it's a gun, but they built it out of bones. You don't want to know what he did to that thing. But believe me, it works. <laughs> Now that's what I call a knife. Ordinarily, this thing doesn't duplicate on throw, but the rest of the path is gone for good. I have additional goodies. And his city crest won't bring it back. As you've seen, I have a bunch of upgrades on. So yeah, part of this, the um Oh, that's funny. Part of this, all those uh gas fellows, windbags, and squirts were either pests or uh workers in the city. They he comes back there. just like I knew he would. The core hums in his pack, the monuments calling for it. The windbags used to be alright, then the calamity took the floor out from under him. So I assume that they divide asexually. The calamity saved some of my old books. Guess it's got a sense of humor. <laughs> is this what I think it is? Never would have pegged the kid as the bookish type. So uh, there are additional Bloody Palace challenges uh, called Who Knows Where that will give you additional story about every character. They're also really hard, so I don't know if I'll be doing them. So we'll just head back. Anything else, old man? Ain't always much to say. That's fine. Kid does it again. Only fair he decides what we build next. So the Lost and Found will give you additional money. The Forge is, as we've seen, a place to upgrade your things. The Arsenal is just where you get more stuff. The Distillery lets you the slot in different to place things. Peace, and the Memorial But we can is... hold our own if we have to. And if the Lost and Found is the shop, the memorial will give you bonuses based on specific uh, things that you've done. The repeater and machete, favorite choices of the Ura hunters we once fought. So every weapon combination has a Picked unique Picked up line traces of other cores while the kid was associated out. with it. Isn't that just great? In better days, the melting pot was sealed tighter than the skin on the squirt. Yeah, squirts are known for being like tadpoles and having skin. So... Of all the plans to survive the calamity, it 
it had to be stab weeds. Well, like, wouldn't it be? Wouldn't the toughest, most annoying thing survive because such is their nature? That's why I'm not dead. Blasted things hurt like a broken heart. <laughs> like, the way that things are said, written, and, like, thought in Bastion are so personal and yet still said with he such cuts down every stab weed like there's gonna be a prize for it if there's a core he figures it ought to be deeper down like that you have to that you you just will glean something core stuck inside one of those fancy cages from from how they say it and what they say but it's also so ambiguous that you will never know what they're talking about like stab weed hurts like a broken heart well, obviously, stab weed is very painful. That's evidenced by the huge, gigantic black thorns on it. He throws a switch. And the fact that now the stranger here compares it to wrong. a broken heart of all things is just such a good character. Quite a bit, as it turns out. The cage starts lifting from the core ever so slow. So anyone who's played a video All game before will know what this is. Just is like, oh, just give me five more minutes. I gotta, I gotta open this thing. Oh my god, that looks so cool with the homing. Not every squirt's born bad. Some spring to the kid's defense. Yeah, we just gotta stand here and cage. shoot. It's gonna take a little while. You know what? That's fine by me. Look at how bad this is. In the same way that in Hades you have your your little setup of weapons. In the same way that in Hades you'd have your your little spec. It's a very very similar thing for that. And, and I'm led to believe Scum bags don't take there are other games by Super Giant Games. I think Transistor works in a sort of similar way. I don't know. Even some gas fellas take his corner. Heard they pop that mean old foreman. I love that this old, grumpy old man is still like that mean old foreman. At this rate, maybe five more minutes. Maybe thirty. Hard to tell. The stranger, his name is Rux, by the way. I don't feel bad about saying that. It's not too, too much of a spoiler. But Rux is such a specific character. With so many beats and gas. Squirts get real territorial around the core. Like... What he does and says is unique to him, and yet it is so a ship familiar. Free sample shows up. Like, I, it's it's something where like I really do feel as though I know rocks. Silly as that may be to say. One thing's for sure, that cage is awful heavy. It ain't all bad. As a kid finds some spices from the motherland. Tax free. Tax free. My man. It's a troublesome scene to be sure. So yeah, these say ancient spices and they're from the motherland as he calls it. But the description says from a distant land. A memento, a sealed jar of exotic ingredients from a distant land. Salandia's ports, uh, ports rolls full of trade ships hawking their wares. Is this all that remains of them now? Yeah. The land that we are in is called Salandia. And it is not where uh, these people, the Salandians, are from. They are from somewhere else. Wherever that may be. A few moments left, and the core goes free. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Give or take a few seconds. Finally, the core's within reach. And done. He's got it. Just gotta get to the nearest barge. Oh, he's coming with me, I guess. He's hitting me. <laughs> That's funny. I still remember the look on his face after that one. So yeah, again, like, the gameplay loop is very, very open and shut and very obvious. There are six cores. You can tell this because there are three on this side and a similar thing on this side. You find the cores, you build a new thing, you come back. It's so... Like, it, it, it doesn't... It's not very, like... 
new, I guess. But that's really not a bad thing. Because, like, with Hades, it's the same thing. Like, here is Hades. It's a roguelike. There is a base for your meta progression and NPCs in it. The rest of the game is standard roguelike fare. And yet, because of how simple the gameplay loop is, and the gameplay is not like, it's not like crazy hard. Um, I wouldn't say it's very simplified. Because uh, like, that feels like an offensive thing to say in regards to these games. They don't have extremely deep gameplay. Like, you do just have your two buttons, your dodge, your parry, block, uh, and special. So, like, you don't really have a lot going on. You don't have, like, Devil May Cry combos going on here, but, like, the game itself is so simple, but it's good. It's fucking good. When I went back and replayed this game recently, because I play this game every year, um, I realized, holy shit, like, Yes, this game is very simple, but there is a lot of stuff given to it to make it work really well. It's the same way that I feel about, like, Portal or Deep Rock Galactic, where, like, there is a lot given to make this game very easy and reliable and solid to play, just on that alone. Folks voyaged across the boundless sea to found Ceylandia. It was good living here for a while. For a while. <laughs> oh yeah, we got a squirt down. He just does the little sound effect that they do. The old world's finished, but the new world's just getting started. Eh, I don't need to buy one. The memorial. Be a kid can pay respect to the old world and earn it in kind. The valediction. Just another one of my sketches. Nothing more. Yeah, all of these are special things you earn for doing stuff in the room. So, build all the shit in the Bastion. Find a bunch of stuff. Uh, do the challenge room. Use this weapon, use the shield, use this weapon, use this weapon, use this weapon. Uh... The Masons. We built the city strong. Now there's only two of us. <laughs> Can't be too careful these days. Oops. Look how just pretty this looks. Like, it's, it's very chaotically put together. Like, look at this little sidewalk thing here. It doesn't make a lot of sense, but, like, it's so beautiful. Oh, God, what a good game. Yeah, this is one of my favorite games. Couples used to walk the sun down all, path. All the time. Like, the kid ain't here for pleasure, though. I'm not sure where I put this. I had a list recently. But a lot of shakers. But then, somebody gets to the core before the kid. The floor starts giving way under the lightest step. The single panic squirt could bring the whole place down. Fragments of the old world rain from the sky. Stray valuables are lying everywhere. Security is all fired up. John, See, their path was intended for leisurely strolling and such. Sky bridges link the path together. One of them bridges whips the kid along. Air travel always was an iffy proposition. So yeah, you can see that, like, one thing that I also really like about this world is the that, calamity like, changed everything. there is so Even much fantastic shit, and yet, it somehow has become mundane. Well, if we mastered the winds in the old days, like, hey, yeah, we, we, we uh, used, like, aeromancy and just... Who else Use the wind to shoot ourselves into the sky. Well, ain't no survivor stole the thing. Scumbag ate it by mistake. Tough break. Unlike the kid, 
in that core and coming back. What I like about this level is that it shows you... live munitions down the path. <laughs> we'll leave it. It's a good... Oh, well, I guess we won't. Find time to find them. These wires to toss those things plenty far away. Even gas fellas need some shut eye from time to time. They get real cranky. Sorry, I'm just focusing on how hard it's going. Yeah, like, I love how much in all this soil, and boredom there is. Kitty in this keeps world. coming back to an overwhelming question. Who else could have survived the calamity? Like, they have advanced technology that, like, Earth humans do not have. But they're still using, like, stone and, like, really old types of mortar and bone in things. So he didn't find the core that time, but that ain't about to stop us. Like, I'm not even sure if this world has, like... Sometimes a single look says it all. Like, I'm not even sure this world has, like, steelwork, you know? So, this one is funny. There's a thing that you can do. Uh, you drink the potion that makes it so... At the distillery, you get the potion that makes it so... When you take damage, you deal damage back. Um... That's not it. This one is you drink the thing that makes it so you automatically deal crits when you're at low health and then throw yourself off the edge of a cliff like 10 times and then do the challenge and you just blow through it. <laughs> the dead. The dead ain't gotta worry about this mess. The calamity took everybody after all. The soundtrack is so. Kids sees it plain, frozen faces all around. Mournful and depressing. You don't much care to see him. Not like this. And again, it still bears mentioning how amazing this narration engine is. Obviously, Hades has. These folks never saw the calamity coming, but someone did. Someone close. Yeah, obviously this game has a whole lot of Someone who ain't like Mr. Beckley and his kindly wife. I love that these random ash corpses are giving backstory names. It's so it's so close. Someone like him. There he is. Something so familiar about that man. It's a snag or two trying to get to him. So that's there. The voice actor who voices that guy. His name is Hulk. He ain't about to stop, no matter what. Yeah, that man's name is Zolf. Um, He's got so many questions after The all. voice actor is Darren Core, who plays actor. Oh, nice. Just ain't got time for answers. <laughs> the Thunder Brothers didn't make it. They never saw what it was like beyond the walls. Nor did the bird boy. Didn't make it. Oh, the bird boy. Look at him, he's playing with his birds. It's so sad. The Jawsons. They didn't make it. I just realized, isn't it a Jawson? Grady Senior. Grady Junior. They didn't make it. But him, he survived. Kid finds proof enough that man ain't from around here. Thank you for the guidance. Just think, without that man, we wouldn't be here right now, would we? It's so unclear what on earth is meant by that. And I love that. Kid does what he has to do. And then, what do you say to a man who's seen too much? Kid hasn't a clue, but he says this.
We have to go. Please. Every single thing in this game. Just complete chef's kiss. He's a proper gentleman, that man. His name is Zolf. No hiding he's an Ura. Folks like him ain't ever been a common sight in Ceylandia. So you can see that all Ceylandia is He's relieved have, to like, see a living face or two. Slightly darker the kid and I introduce hair. ourselves in like, kind. White, white. Both to him and to each other for the first time. I love that, by the way, the fact that they hadn't actually said hello to each other. And then the Ura, a different ethnic group of humans, the same, like, you know, just a different race. Um, the Ura have, like, completely white skin and black hair. For Zolf, Ceylandia was like a second home. He's real worried about his first home, too. Far to the east. The Ura come from a place called the Tazzle Terminals. They're called that because they're like subway terminals and they all live underground. Which is why their skin is like that. Um, we all lost loved ones in the calamity, he says. I don't know how I'm gonna go on without mine. He was born in the Tazzle Terminals. The Ura sent him on a mission of peace to our city. And he's lived here ever since. So yeah, he's, he's an ambassador. Um, the Ura and the Ceylandia... Sorry, Ceylandians. Long, long been a point of contention between one another. And like, I would argue that they are almost more what this game is about. Like, it's... Because this game kind of is not about the game. Like, that's this character's name, by the way. But that's all we know about him. He's just the kid. And, like, he's kind of irrelevant in this story. He's just a guy who gets things done and doesn't say anything. And I would argue that the big plot is more about the history of this world. We fought the Ura decades ago, but that was then. Things are different between us now. So, yeah, decades. It's been contentious. The cores. They remember. That's why this place is coming together. That's why things are gonna be all right. Well, look what we have here. Yeah, normally this is when you would unlock the other three things, but I can put them together at my own pace. Oh, we got a thing here. Let's go check it out. Oh, cool. The trappers, daring bunch of fools. They'll be missed. A lot of things need fixing up in this world, and we can start right here. So yeah, the star naturally means that you've maxed out. Oh. I'm trying to think of what I even unlock next. I think it's the thing that I've upgraded to next. Here it is then. His bow's looking lean and mean like a prize fighter. Arrows like that can practically find their own way. So you can see that, like, still, because of the weird nature of industry in this world, there's a lot of different things used. So scumbag arrowheads are poisonous because they dipped it in the goo that comes out of a scumbag. And stabweed arrowheads do more damage because they put the little thorns on it because nature still makes better, sharp, pointy things than the Ceylondians. And then this is very interesting. Ura fletching and sail fletching. So, more damage or poison. Like, the fact that they would name these after the ethnic groups that likely make them is very interesting. And then... Ain't that the finest breaker's bow we ever seen? So yeah. As with everything, unique dialogue for when you max upgrade a weapon. And we have the full top, we have the whole top row done. Cool. So yeah, Zulf, Rux, and the Kid. Like, these people are called the Stranger, the Survivor, and then we get a third one that is the Singer. We tracked down a couple more cores near the edge of the city. Um. Oh, yeah, I can go get more drinks. The gods. They're all undone. Undone is a very important name. I love that instead of landing, he's just taking a little nap here. Kid says a little prayer anyway. Couldn't hurt, 
right? Folks used to make pilgrimage here to pay their respects to Piff, the bowl. So something that I just adore. There is this concept in screenwriting. Well, the gods are long gone now. And the orchard core is long gone too. I forget you said this. Seems Piff ain't much of a watchdog. What a, what a bitch to say. Like, hmm, turns out that god full of shit. And like, granted, boy is it the time to say it when the world has ended and the gods didn't do anything. Piff stood for something once. Something real. In time, though, the bull stopped being a symbol and started being decoration. He couldn't even save his loyal subjects. Um, Piff makes a decent scarecrow, at least. But yeah, there's a concept of like half the then things Piff lights that you up write. Like a rodeo. I think it's like only one third of the things that you write slash happen in your world you should make it on screen. Through his eye. So, like in the Lord of the Rings, the movies. Think about how much history is not presented. And by that I mean, like, the Silmarillion still clearly happened. Same deal with the Hobbit. It breaks into bits. Must have been guarding that shrine. The Hobbit and the Silmarillion still happened in... So what'll it be? Invoke the gods? Or tell them off? <laughs> so yeah, invoking the gods, praying to them, makes your game harder. Because they're like, no, you should suffer. This one's Messiah. Kid don't need favors from the likes of Piff. Well, if the gods are alive, they must be plenty sore. They have little food items in the world to just give you stuff. Yeah, like there is so much Papa history windbags about the Mora and the Ceylondians, the about gods like can make it even harder. every single thing that happened in Ceylondia. Like we see the very end of the story. We see the calamity happen, and then the direct result of said calamity. We don't find out what happens, like except for just those things. You know what, that's great. It's, you know, I almost hesitate to say it's like Dark Souls. Because in Dark Souls, a lot of things happen in that Dark Souls. Still, one of my favorite item descriptions in all of Dark Souls is the Lloyd's Talisman from Dark Souls 1. Because it mentions that they're a talisman of Lloyd, obviously. And then that all Father Lloyd is Gwyn's uncle. What? Like, Gwyn is a character we meet. We find out that Gwyn had an uncle? And like, if an uncle is your father's brother, that means that Gwyn had a father. The way that the story is told, it might be the case that Gwyn just comes into the game. And like, we don't know that that's not the case. Like. Most would assume that the way that the origin story of the world is told, Gwyn just showed up and, like, started existing. You know, he just came from nothing. The gods don't care about trinkets, but the kid ain't no god. <laughs> Kid ain't found a core, but at least he found Zolf's precious shrine. Yeah, like, all father Lloyd, Gwyn's uncle. Wait, so that means that Gwyn had a father and has an uncle, and the fact that they are brothers means that Gwyn's father also had a father. So Gwyn's the grandson of somebody. What an amazing line that says so little. The Ura feared the gods. We turned them into toys put their faces on our walls so interesting about how like just a very minor discussion about how religious iconography 
just becomes set dressing at some point. Here. Yeah. So all of these names, all these gods have names, sins associated with them, things that they do in the world. And it's not like they are like, oh, I'm the god of fire and I'm the god of ice. It's like hope and despair, oath and abandon, pain and pleasure, health and atrophy, commotion and order. It's not chaos and order, commotion. Yeah, they're all gods of a concept and its own antithesis, which is so interesting. Zolf doesn't touch the thing. Says the god of commotion is no children's toy. And he, he refers to it to just the god of commotion. At the current time, all we have to go on is that the aura called... Zolf is kind of how we view the aura, because he's the, like, primo example of it. Um... And so, like, it could be that, to the Ura, he's just commotion. And maybe he's just ordered to the Celandians, but maybe the Celandians respect There's only the one way to send a brick forth. The hard way. Sure, the city marshals may be gone. But now the fort's crawling with windbags. Oh yeah, on the topic, every single, like, weapon in this is associated with a specific job or type of job. The calamity was mercy for normal folks. And we get to find out, like... The windbags ain't so lucky. They've been left to freeze or starve or face the kid. Yeah, that's Again, uh, you can see the heads of Pip here. Because, like, yeah, they really do just Wham. be putting that shit on their Kids walls. Kids ready for the windbags this time. <laughs> the way that it looks so... Well, windbags young and old keep fighting for the fort. At least the marshals left the kid a part and gift. So, this thing is fantastic. And this is a real proper gun made of steel and iron. Seeing as it is a video game shotgun, its spread is the size of, like, a barn. And its range is miserable. Something that's very nice with the upgrades. Bag is much different than normal you can folks. actually make All this red a lighter. Place to stay and, some and as the director will make the rain here lighter. in this very fort. But on the topic of it, I've commented on how video games shock business on the ground like in the old days. The windbags put the kid on notice. For some reason, I just thought you were going to say the windbag came out last. Kid gets cancelled on Twitter. Windbags can't use the martial supplies, but the kid sure can. Honestly, what's to stop me from doing this, though? Cinderbrick gave him enough heat and metal to munch on for a while. Well, the fort ain't theirs by right. Can't blame them for one, though. Oh, so many of those sorry <laughs> things hold up inside that old fort. I know that it's like a very simple spider graph, but like, oh, it looks so cool. I will not get over it. Thank you very much. Not a scratch on him as he presses on the higher ground. <laughs> Honestly, 
Honestly, with such little to say, I might just start uploading these without my face or commentary. If that's alright with everyone. I just, I have so many opinions about this game, but like, one thing about this game is that like, it really speaks for itself. Like, literally as well. Like, with Morrowind, for those who don't know, I've done a very long, in-depth, and great playthrough of Morrowind that you should definitely watch. But with Morrowind, like, there's so much that is not being said. Kid's stash of grenades is their form of things get even worse. And it's, it's like a lot of those things. everything in sight with that new fangled musket. Fair mentioning for their own sake. Like, like Security I'm someone who's read on the wire. Windbags gummed up the Not books. all of them, but a significant amount. And so for me to be playing more when it's be like, by the way, this thing is much more book. Because it ain't afraid again. Who has time to read all the fucking books? And the um. They trap the kid in the middle of the fort's parade grounds. They bring out Glutus and Glandon and all their scumbag uncles. I love that uncles. Scumbag <laughs> They got something to gain and only their sorry hides to lose. Yeah, I've been doing this a lot more recently where, like, I'll just willingly turn off or camera for an LP. I do have more in videos upcoming, actually. Uh, I guess spoiler. But, like, as I've been saying, with Morrowind, like, sometimes it bears help to, like, have people say things. And what's more, there's a lot of dead air in there. Because there is no fast travel system, and so you do even more walking than you would in a normal world. But like, even when I play Oblivion in Skyrim, I will still have a lot of things to say and a lot of stuff to talk about. But like with this, the game literally does speak for itself. The narrator is here to say so many cool things. And you know what? That's perfectly fine. It is in fact great. It's what makes this game so powerful. The fact that there is a mouthpiece in this game for the world, the developers, is just so fascinating. And like, I, I, you can definitely see and tell why. I just missed that shot straight up why this game blew up in ways that other Supergiant games didn't. And like, with Hades, they've, they've hit it right on the head. But with um, Transistor, like, everyone's like, oh, it's like Bastion, but there's not the cool narrator. And like, Transistor has its own cool things going on. It has a weird sci-fi cyberpunk world that's another this hybrid thing or straight up, like, Greek mythology, but uh, more openly gay than a college professor would have you believe. I guess more openly bisexual, considering, you know, Zag is full-on uh, bisexual. Is that the Proc in that game? I know his name is Achilles, but the ship name with him in Patroclus is Patroclus. And listen, in this house we fucking ship Patroclus. Uh, but yeah, in Transistor, you're playing as a singer who has gone mute, and I believe she shares a voice actress with a singer in this game, a character known as the singer. This is 
why it's not good to have nothing but guns, by the way, because you don't have a lot of big whammy damage that you can do. And in fact, because of the health regeneration that, that I just realized it's so well. That's why this is taking so long. So, there is a thing that you can do. Davis. There you go. You can get some of the things that charge and charge up, which is just fantastic. That certainly uh, lightens up my workload. There we go. Sorry, yeah, I just completely forgot that I put that thing on. I was like, yeah, their health bar should be more empty. The uncles go out with a whimper. The windbags finally get the message. There we go. So I realized that I couldn't just spray my damage around without like really focusing in hardcore onto someone. I had forgotten that I put the health regeneration room on. Pardon me. I am okay at this game. I'm fantastic. Kid used to dream of getting the marshal's badge, but not like this. It's a very standard police. The skyway's a welcome sight after all that. And now ain't nothing left for nobody down at Cinderbrick Fort. Yeah, and I don't even know what Pyre's about. I'll be perfectly honest, I don't know what Pyre's about. Kid shows up just as Ulf's telling me about his own journey to the city. Right. Cut the episode after. Seems the only thing the Calamity saved for Zulf was his smoking pipe. So that'll guarantee us another trip to who knows where. Uh, this one will tell us about Zulf and his backstory and history. This one will tell us about Rux. Uh, and then there's another one that'll tell us about the singer. The Marshal seemed like good man, he says. They treated him with dignity. So yeah, the cops weren't violently racist, which is good at least. Um, which is there's so much here. It's so deep. Zolf brought his antique smoking pipe all the way from the terminals. And antique crack to go in it. <laughs> Poor kid collapses after just one drag. So it knocks you out, and then. Uh, Rux will tell you a story about every person as long as you can pass the tests involved. There's also another one about the kid. Even since the Ura surrendered to us, the marshals kept a wary eye on him. So, completely different story. But yeah, we can see that from here, the breakers used the breaker's bow. The masons used the sail hander, hammer. Gravers used the machete. And we can see that all these people have names and like the jobs have a specific title. And like there are stereotypes about those people. And like what they do and Lover what they Peter use. Peter goes with a hammer better than a box of nails. <laughs> All right, slot this thing in there. Zolf's travels ain't much compared to what the kids had to go through for all this. Now, is that a, a Ceylonian diminishing the efforts of an aura, or have I really just had a bad time of it? So, the higher level you get, the higher of a drink limit you hit, which is very funny to me. Black rye is like hot pineapple chowder on a cold day. Brings back memories. So yeah, I am probably not going to have my face on for the next chunk of episodes. Um, I will come back and talk about things at least in like a big old post-commentary way. But like, I... One of the things with Let's Play is that you kind of do it so people don't have to play the game themselves. But, like, this is something that I think you can justifiably play and watch. Because, um, like, with something like an, a big RPG like New Vegas or Morrowind that I have Let's Played, you're going to have a different path through it than me, you know? You're probably going to have magic instead of melee or, like, go for a more evil playthrough instead of a good one or something like that. But, like, 
with this, this is something that I think it bears repeating. And that's part of why the New Game Plus is in here. And part of why I wanted to do this playthrough in New Game Plus to begin with. Um, also, the reason that not everything is unlocked, despite the fact that I play this once a year, every year, uh, most of my saves are on my old 360. This is my PC, which sadly does not have my saves. But anyway, um, I've been Alfred. This has been Bastion, uh, Supergiant's first game. It's good to look back at the look back at your history, you know. Get a vibe for what it used to be. But yeah, I've been Alfred. Uh, I'll see you guys next time. Uh, by all means, please watch some of my other playthroughs. Uh, subscribe if you like. And uh, have a great day, everyone. Thank you.